Okay, this is uh, section one of manufacturing and we're doing this because in the year 2015 on the AQA syllabus uh, the students have been asked to do a, a research assignment on, on UK manufacturing. Now the reason why it's important, I mean this isn't so important for business study students, but the reason why the manufacturing sector is so important to UK is because of this equation here. Aggregate demand is equal to C plus I plus C plus X minus M. Now this shows how much demand there is in the UK economy. X stands for exports and M stands for imports. And this sector here is pretty negative in terms of UK performance. So we got to 2008 and the reason why we had a financial crisis in 2008 was largely because the UK economy was based upon debt. So we got consumer debt, government debt and also trade debt. OK, so what you wanted to try and do is you wanted to try and shift our economy to investment and exports. And this is what George Osborne set out to do in his plan for growth in May 2010. Now his plan for growth was really let's base our economy on investment and exports and we're going to start that whole process. Okay, so because this is the reason if we can increase exports, we get the multiple accelerator kicks in, we get more investments, then we'll get no trade debt, and then we will move away from this very bad decade for the UK. I call it the uh, the nice it's, it was called the nice decade. I sometimes call it the bullshit decade. And we want to move away from this and we want to create a much stronger manufacturing sector. However, this is very, very difficult because in 2014, uh, manufacturing as a percentage of GDP is now 10% and in 1992 it is 22% of GDP. So really the whole of this research assignment is, has the UK manufacturing sector got a future? Okay, part two of this little movie uh, video on here and this report is produced by the Boston Consulting Group. <clears throat> now, uh, believe it or not, the, the rising global stars in the world happen to be the USA and, and Mexico. And probably it's a big reason for this in the UK is because of shale gas and therefore the energy prices are much, much, much cheaper. So therefore in the global economy now, there's a thing called onshoring or reshoring, where a lot of the manufacturing is now coming back to America from, from China. Uh, Mexico is, is, is also rising up because it's got very, very, very large productivity gains. It's also close to America. It's also benefiting from low energy costs as well. Holding steady, those countries that are doing okay. And often what they say in the Boston Consulting report is that these could be regional stars. So <clears throat> India, Indonesia, Netherlands and, and the UK. All these countries are, are doing pretty well. India really because of very large rises in productivity. Indonesia happens to be one of the cheapest places in the world to, to do business. I think on the competitive scale index, it's 81, whereas America is 100. So clearly Indonesia is cheaper than America. However, they still got, they've still got problems in terms of corruption and infrastructure and big issues like that. Whereas the UK and, on, and the Netherlands they're pretty strong on all of those, on the corruption index and on having a decent infrastructure and everything else, but they're also doing much better in terms of productivity. The UK has also benefited from a lower exchange rate. These countries are losing ground. <clears throat> Australia, Belgium, France, Italy, Sweden. And the primary reason is probably because of a lack of labour market flexibility. What the hell does that mean? Well, a lack of labour market flexibility is that the workers are not, sorry, not looking at the camera, is that the workers are not particularly well trained. Well, sorry, they are well trained, but they're very expensive or they're not willing to move and they're not open to new ideas and things like that. So these countries are not doing particularly well on, on those ones. Now, we always believe that China is doing really, really well and Brazil's doing really well and also Eastern Europe. Well, they are doing pretty well, but they're under pressure and they're under pressure because wages are rising rapidly in all of these countries, particularly actually in Brazil and China. And also energy costs are, are much higher, so their own energy costs are, are becoming higher. But also the fact that America has now got shale gas, and the UK may also get shale gas. Now if we get shale gas, that means that our energy costs will, will uh, fall and so we'll get another competitive advantage from there. So overall, according to the Boston Consulting Group, the UK is doing okay. And we're going to look at the reasons why that is the case. Thank you. OK, so this is once again, once again, uh, manufacturing. And the, the, the base of the question is, can the UK compete with the new globalised market? Well, a very good example of where it can't compete is in terms of steel. 
and in steel in the 1970s the UK produced 27.8 million tonnes out of a total market size of 595 million tonnes which is almost about I think it's 4.6% almost 5% by the year 2011 the UK was only producing sorry well that should really say 11 million tonnes 11 million tonnes of steel the whole global market was 1.5 billion, 1,500 million, and China by itself was producing 695 million tons of steel. Obviously, it was going through that infrastructural development stage within its history. So, therefore, certainly in steel, it doesn't look as if the UK can compete particularly well. So, the definition of being able to compete is the ability to produce products and services more effectively and efficiently than your rival competitors. Now, but there have been examples of where the UK has competed very, very well, JCB, Jaguar Land Rover, and AstraZeneca. Even though Jaguar Land Rover has been taken over by Tata, which is an Indian company, these companies have done incredibly well over, over the last few decades. So it is possible for the UK to compete on, on the global basis, but some industries, particularly steel and the textiles, have clearly suffered. So that's the overall picture. So we want to see what is the future now for UK manufacturing. This goes right back to the first lesson of why I talked George Osborne's big thing is we must increase exports, we must increase our manufacturing sector to survive. Okay, next session is, well, uh, can the UK compete on the, uh, on, on the global manufacturing basis? Well, at the moment in the UK, we have very low interest rates, and that means it's going to be cheaper to borrow money. Okay, the banking sector is in a, bit, a little bit of a mess down here, so I may, maybe should put that down here, really. Yeah, our banks may need a little bit of, of a reform, but there is now a, a green investment bank in the UK and there's a possibility of the government putting more money into the banking system so we can get more money out, for, particularly for the manufacturing sector. Uh, low exchange rates. Well, low exchange rate means cheaper export prices, higher import prices, so that's clearly going to benefit the UK. And they fell by 25% immediately after the 2008 and, and, and eight crisis. In fact, you can say the UK's economic policies have been far better than those in Europe if we look at quantitative easing, printing money and helping out our banking sector. We've been much more effective in, in the way in which we've done that. The UK's biggest advantage though is probably the UK's flexible labour market. And this really all has started to occur in the 1980s within, within the UK. What does that mean? It means, well, we have a, a well-trained workforce, but also one that's willing to adapt and move. Now, that's a big advantage to the UK, particularly when we compare the UK to Western Europe. I know that China, I've got the T-shirt on here. Uh, I know that China's got very, very cheap labour, and actually it's also got very well-trained labour, and it's got a much better trained labour force uh, but it's still not always the best place to do business in, in, in the world. Seed funding for high tech companies. Now this is government support. The government has, has helped small tech companies get more seed funding. Uh, subsidising low carbon technologies. Yes, that's also occurring, but on a fairly minor scale. One of the biggest things that they've done is they've decreased corporation tax from 28% and by the year 2015 it's going to be uh, 20%. Now that is half of the American rate almost half. But basically the government has taken a non-interventionist stand, a market-based approach towards British manufacturing. Now in terms of that, because we've got pretty good institutions in the UK, we're not maybe not quite so sure about the banking sector right now, right, the UK manufacturing sector should be in, in uh, pretty good hands. But I think it's also got to take advantage of these 10 mega trends that, that were outlined in a report in 2014 by KPMG, the factory of the future is going to be a lot of automation, so it's not going to be based so much on labour. The near shoring is going to come back again. There's going to be a big shift in demand to the east, as shown by Tata JLR. Cluster manufacturing, which is getting hubs of really good manufacturing into one particular part of the country, Oxfordshire with cars, for example. Resource efficiency, right, being really good in terms of your energy supplies. The talent challenge, getting the right people in, so we need more programs, etc. in the UK. Nanotechnology, service-based models, sourcing, and 3D printing. Now, all of these are massive changes. Now, if the UK can take advantage of all of those, then the UK is going to do really, really well. So, yes, the UK can compete, but it needs to be able to take advantage of these 10 mega trends on here. Thank you. Okay, so we're still doing the uh, 
manufacturing essay, which is, you know, to, to what extent will UK manufacturing be able to take advantage of, of, of globalisation? Well, the Fraser Institute from Canada says that right, the, the, the key reason why the UK can do quite well is because of its labour market flexibility. So therefore, if manufacturers want to change, therefore the workers will also help, help in that change process. So the UK is doing pretty well. It's got a low exchange rate. Uh, we may have cheaper energy if we decide to go down the shale gas route. Uh, we've got low interest rates, we've got low corporation tax, we're a big gateway to Europe, so there's lots of foreign direct investment that's come in for that reason. So the UK is in quite a strong position really. So it's one of those countries which is, it is doing okay right now. Not as well as the USA and Mexico. But let's have a look at some of the other competitors around the world, and this is the problem that they have. So for instance, if we were to take Indonesia, which is 17% more efficient than, than, than America in terms of its labor, the cost of labor and its productivity. So it's much more competitive and in terms of the UK, it's 25% more efficient. However, this is a problem with certain countries. They don't do very well in, in terms of their corruption ranking. So here it's 114th in the world, Russia's 127 and India's 94. At the same time, their infrastructure systems are not as good, particularly Russia's again, and it's not a particularly easy place in which to, to do business. So those are the sort of problems that they have, and we've tended to look at so far on labor market flexibility, wages, productivity, and energy costs. Those are the big four. But on the other indicators, these countries are not doing so well. And those are the sort of indicators that the UK tends to do quite well. So if the UK can take advantage of the mega trends, right, despite what's happened in the textile industry, which was blown apart, we may do well in the future. But even in the textile industry, we're still pretty good at designing clothes and marketing clothes. So the lower end sort of value added, making them in Bangladesh and India, they make them whilst we add the extra value to those products. So even in those areas, we're actually doing, a, we are doing okay. So, but quite clearly, as I said in the first lecture, we need to do far better because we can't run our economy on consumer debt and government debt, which is why we have this big drive for exports. Thank you.